Hey everybody and welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me today. In this video we're going to quickly look at organizing your files with RenPy. Before I get started, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who subscribes and hits the notification icon. It really helps me out. Also, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and members. Your names are going to be running across the bottom of the screen. Your support really does mean so much to me. It's unbelievable. If you are interested in supporting the channel, the links to Patreon are in the description below. And of course, you can just join the channel by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button. So let's jump right into this then. So when it comes to organizing your RemPy files, it helps to understand how RemPy actually compiles all of these scripts. And the short answer is what it does is takes every .rpy file contained within the slash game folder and turns them into one big long script. Organizes this script dependent on these init offset flags. If you put init offset minus one in this script and then init offset minus two in another script, the init offset minus two script will be compiled and run before it. Then this one will be run and then any scripts which do not have an init offset flag in them will be compiled last. This means that you can put your files anywhere within the game folder. See, I put them within a folder called scripts and then I organize them into subfolders like so. But you can really put them in any folder you want as long as they end in .rpy and then if required they have an init offset flag, you can pretty much put them wherever you like. I've done a lot of trial and error on this particular topic and I've tried organizing my RPY files by which character is contained within a specific event. I've tried doing it by location. And what I've found is that using those methods sooner or later, you're going to find yourself searching through script files because if there's two characters in a scene, you can't remember which one the script file is stored under or locations. You might have one location that contains most of the events, in which case that folder is gonna get really chock-a-block with stuff. Now, and what I've found is that the easiest way to organize my files is to have every chain of events, i.e. every little story arc, to be contained within a numbered RPY file, which is stored inside a single folder, which in this case I've got arcs. And as you can see, I've got all of my numbered arcs listed there. And then any events which don't fall into an arc will go into misc events and any events which can be repeated multiple times will go into repeatables. And that just means that I always know where to go. All of my screens are stored in a separate folder and then my functions, my GUI, my options, my screens and my scripts are all contained within a core folder, which means that I always know where to go for them. Anything which declares variables I've got in an initial or an init folder. Again, just to make it easy so I know exactly where to look every time. And then as you can see, there's still files here which are a hangover from my previous experiments in doing it. I'm still in the process of migrating all of the labels, all of the blocks of code from these files into their relative numbered arc or their folder. And that way it just makes life a lot easier to navigate through your code. And when it comes to images, I pretty much do the same thing. I have my image arcs here. And as you can see, there's a lot of weird folders here where I've gone from using different uh, methods over the time that I've experimented with. And I'm again in the process of migrating them as I update them into the relevant arc folder. And as you can see, I've got some I just have the images in there and then in others I actually have the event within that chain as a separate folder itself. And that's really just from trial and error, that's what I've come up with. You might have different ways of doing it. All your images need to be contained within the images folder. That's the folder that the auto assign function, i.e. the function that will automatically assign an image to every JPEG or PNG that's contained within that folder. Anything outside that folder won't get auto declared, so you'll have to do it manually, which is a bit of a fuss. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.